So you've probably been hearing a lot about the Rohingyas in the news recently. They've been called the Asian Palestinians. It's said that this Muslim community is being ethnically cleansed from Myanmar and now this clip has gone viral which shows fellow Muslims, um, Indonesian university students protesting to get these Rohingya refugees removed. But who are they? Where do they come from? Why is this happening and what is being done? Well originally they were from Eastern Bengal, modern day Bangladesh. Bangladesh and during the early 19th century the British were economically encouraging these people to emigrate to colonial Burma to work in the paddy fields. By 1931 there were over half a million Muslims in Burma. This naturally caused a fair bit of ethnic tensions in the majority Buddhist area but British hegemony kept things peaceful for the most part. But then World War II happened and the Japanese invaded. The Buddhists joined the Japanese invaders and the Rohingya Muslims fled to the British for safety. But as I'm sure you all know, the British were useless against the Japanese and the colonial government collapsed. The Rohingyas were now left to fend for themselves against the typically brutal Japanese who were particularly cruel here, especially because they had support from the Buddhist locals. The Muslims retaliated with some pretty brutal raids of their own and this would start the inner ethnic violence that would plague this region even up to this day. Now, now skip to 1949 and Burma is now Myanmar. Despite Japan losing the war, it were the Buddhists who held the upper hand in post-war negotiations, probably because they made up most of the population and according to some, they started an apartheid state right here and then. Things became worse in 1962 when the Rohingyas were made pretty much stateless and declared as um, aliens from Bengal. Over the next few decades, there were numerous attempts to ethnically cleanse them out of Myanmar. 250,000 to Bangladesh in 1991 alone for example. And there would be terror attacks by the Rohingyas in retaliation. In 2012 a group of them gang raped and murdered a Buddhist woman. In 2016 they killed nine members of the National Border Police and in 2017 the ARSA who are a insurgency group killed 12 uh, uniformed personnel and the state retaliated horrifically to each one of these events burning down hundreds of villages and causing hundreds of thousands of Rohingyas to flee to Bangladesh. These tensions have only intensified since. So who's to blame for all this human misery? As we've established ethnic rivalries really became murderous during World War II and with nationalism sweeping into the area the belief that Myanmar slash Burma should be for the Buddhists and for the Buddhists only really took hold leaving uh, no room for minorities and because of this history from World War II where these two groups were at war pretty much killing each other there's a lot of genuine historical grievances and the prejudice of believing the Rohingyas as dangerous as terrorists really originated from here and in recent years especially their desperate state has led to them really living up to their name. I think we can really see the enmity towards the Muslims during election periods. In 2015 for example the leader of the National League for Democracy, one of the main parties, Su Kai, said that she shared the anti-Muslim sentiments of her fellow people. She also said that these Rohingyas were illegal immigrants and were an existential threat to Myanmar. And furthermore here in the west we might think that the military junta are unpopular there but they really aren't. Before the coup in 2017 there were international condemnations of the military's ethnic cleansing of the Rohingyas but in Myanmar tens of thousands rallied together to protest against the international criticism. Su Kai's party um, said it would be political suicide to defend the Rohingyas and I really want to hammer this point down because I don't think I've uh, made it properly yet but it's mainly the military who's been raising the Rohingya uh, villages to the ground and forcing them out of the country and this is one of the main reasons why they had so much popular support when they overthrew the civilian government in 2021. The army are seen as pretty much heroes who saved Myanmar from the Rohingyas. So quite obviously if something was going to be done it wouldn't be done domestically because the general populace pretty much wants their extermination. So how about the international community?
community. Well, China clearly isn't going to speak ill of Myanmar's human rights record, especially when they're one of um, China's most important allies and they also have their own skeletons in the closet. India, in theory at least, also wants to keep uh, friendly relations to sort of balance out China. And the other neighbour, Bangladesh, is pretty much a nobody in geopolitical terms, with no real economy to speak of. And as a result, they've been very critical of Myanmar and um, they're also a very easy target to dump all the Rohingyas in. It's not like friendly relations with Bangladesh matters economically to Myanmar. But unfortunately for the Rohingyas, Bangladesh is very, very poor and simply cannot support hundreds of thousands of refugees. So many of them have tried escaping to richer Muslim countries, for example, uh, the UAE, but most notably Indonesia. But unfortunately, number one, um, their reputation for being terror attackers precede them. Supporting thousands of refugees is very expensive for any country. And despite both groups being Muslim, there are major cultural differences differences. And also, Indonesia does not want to be the dumping ground to Myanmar's and I suppose um, by extension China's um, unwanted people. It's simply not a good precedent to make. So in all, the Rohingya situation is terrible and there's no relief in sight. Thanks for listening.